Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic for discussion is understanding protein folding. So we will be covering the basics of protein structure, forces driving protein folding, protein folding pathways, the protein folding problem, experimental techniques to study protein folding, computational tools, challenges and uh, recent advances in protein folding. So let's get into the topic. So what is protein folding? Protein folding is the process by which a linear chain of amino acids folds into three dimensional structure. The folder structure is known as the native state and it is essential for the protein to function properly. So it is very important to have a particular structure to function properly. So what is its importance in biology? Proteins are the workforce of the cell as you know. They perform wide variety of functions including catalyzing biochemical reactions, transporting molecules and providing structural support. The three dimensional structure of the protein determines its function. For example, the enzyme amylase has a cleft that is perfectly shaped to bind to the starch molecules. When these starch molecules bind to the cleft, amylase can break them down into glucose molecules. If the amylase protein were to misfold, its cleft would no longer be the, in the correct shape and it would not be able to bind to starch molecule and function properly. So that is what it is important to have its uh, three dimensional structure. Protein misfolding can lead to a number of diseases including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and cystic fibrosis. And in these diseases, protein fold incorrectly and form aggregates that can damage the cells and tissues. So let's uh, look briefly into the overview of uh, protein structure hierarchy. Protein has uh, four levels of structure, primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure. The primary structure of a protein is its amino acid sequence and the secondary structure of the protein is the local arrangement of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. The two most common types of uh, secondary structures are alpha helices and beta sheets. The tertiary structure of a protein is the three dimensional arrangement of secondary structures. The tertiary structure is determined by the interaction between the amino acids in the polypeptide chain. Whereas the quaternary structure of protein is the interaction between multiple polypeptide chains. Some proteins are made up of single polypeptide chains while others are made up of multi polypeptide chains. Let's look at the forces that drive the protein folding. The hydrophobic effect is the main force that drive protein folding. The hydrophobic effect is the tendency of water molecule to exclude non-polar molecules. Non-polar molecules are molecules that do not have a net charge. Amino acids with non-polar side chains fold into the interior of the protein where they are shielded from the water molecule. So this is known as the hydrophobic effect. The hydrogen bonds are another important force that drive protein folding. Hydrogen bonds are weak bonds that form between the hydrogen atom and electronegative atom such as oxygen or nitrogen. Hydrogen atoms can form between amino acids in the polypeptide chain and they can also form between polypeptide chain and water molecules. Next one is the Van der Waals forces. These are weak attractive forces that act between all molecules. Van der Waals forces are caused by uneven distribution of electrons electrons in the molecules. Van der Waals forces play a role in protein folding but they are not as important as hydrophobic effect and the hydrogen bonds. Electrostatic interactions are attractive and uh, repulsive forces between the charged molecules. Ionic bonds are strong electrostatic interaction between ions whereas dipole-dipole interactions are weak electrostatic interaction between molecules that have a net dipole moment. Electrostatic interactions play a key role in protein folding but they are not as important as the other two. Let's look at the different uh, protein folding pathways. The the energy landscape of a protein is a graph that shows energy of a protein at different conformations. The native state of the protein is the lowest energy conformation or the global minimum. However, there are many other local minima on the energy landscape. These are conformations that are lower in energy than the unfolded state, but they are not the lower energy conformation. The native state of the protein is the most stable conformation of the protein. It is a conformation with the lowest energy. The unfolded state of a protein is the least stable conformation of the protein. It is the confirmation with highest energy. Folding intermediates are the conformations of a protein that are on the path to native state. Folding intermediates are not as stable as the native state but they are more stable than the unfold state. Let's look at the uh, protein folding problem. Anfinsen's thermodynamic hypothesis states that the native state of a protein is the most stable conformation of the protein. This means that native state is the conformation with the lowest energy. The next concept is the Levinthal's paradox. Levinthal's paradox is a concept in the field of protein folding named after the American 
by a physicist Cyrus Leventhal who introduced it in 1969. Leventhal's paradox highlights the apparent contradiction between the vast number of possible conformations a protein can theoretically explore during the folding and remarkably fast time scales at which the protein fold to their native biological active structures. Leventhal calculated that uh, it would take a protein trillions of years to fold uh, into its native state by randomly sampling all possible conformation. However, proteins fold into their native state in milliseconds to seconds. The protein folding problem is complex because uh, there are vast number of possible conformations that a protein can adopt. For example, a small protein with 100 amino acids has 10 to the power 100 possible conformations. This is a number that is greater than the number of atoms in the universe. So you can see how complex it is. Let's look at uh, some of the experimental techniques that can be used to study protein. One of the techniques is uh, circular dichorism. It is a technique that can be used to measure the secondary structure of a protein. CD works by measuring difference in the absorbance of left and right circularly polarized light by a protein. The secondary structure of the protein affects the absorption of light. So circular dichorism can be used to determine what percentage of the protein is in alpha helices, beta sheets and other secondary structures. X-ray crystallography is another technique that can be used to determine the three-dimensional structure of a protein. X-ray crystallography works by shining x-rays at a crystal of the protein. The x-rays diffract off the protein atoms and the diffraction pattern can be used to reconstruct the three-dimensional structure of the protein. There is another technique called the nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy. And it is a technique that can be used to determine the three-dimensional structure of a protein in solution. Uh, the NMR works by measuring the interaction between the nuclei of the atoms in the protein. And the interaction between nuclei are affected by the three-dimensional structure of the protein. So NMR can be used to reconstruct three-dimensional structure of the protein. Mass spectrometry is another technique uh, that can be used to measure the mass of a protein. Mass spectrometry works by ionizing the protein and then measuring the mass to charge ratio of the ionized protein. The mass to charge ratio of a protein is related to its uh, three-dimensional structure. So mass spectrometry can be used to study the protein folding. There are other techniques like uh, fluorescence spectroscopy and uh, cryo-electron microscopy that can also use to study the protein folding. Coming to the various computational tools for uh, protein folding, Molecular dynamic simulation is a computational technique that can be used to study the folding and the dynamics of the protein. So molecular dynamics uh, simulation works by calculating the forces between the atoms in the protein and then using those forces to stimulate the movements of atoms over time. Another technique is the Monte Carlo simulation. It is an another computational technique and uh, this simulation works by randomly sampling different conformations of a protein and then calculating the energy of each conformation. The conformation with the lowest energy is then accepted. Rosetta is another tool that can be used to predict the three dimensional structure of proteins and other Micromolecules. The Rosetta works by a variety of algorithms to search for the lowest energy conformation of the protein or other macromolecules. Foldit is another platform that allows researchers to solve the protein folding problems. Foldit works by uh, presenting users with a protein folding puzzle and then asking them to help fold the protein into its native state. The platform uses solution from users to improve its ability to predict the protein structures. So the deep learning approaches are a type of uh, machine learning that has been uh, recently been used to develop uh, powerful protein folding prediction tools. The deep learning approaches uh, work by training a neural network on a latest uh, data set of protein structure. Coming to the uh, protein stability, uh, the chemical denaturation uh, is uh, a technique that can be used to measure the stability of a protein. The chemical denaturation works by exposing the protein to a chemical denaturant such as urea or uh, guanine hydrochloride and the chemical denaturant uh, disrupts the non-covalent interaction that holds the protein together causing the protein to unfold. The concentration of the chemical denaturant required to unfold the protein is the measure of its uh, protein stability. Another approach is uh, thermal denaturation that can be used to measure the stability of protein. The thermal denaturation works by heating the protein and then measuring the temperature at which the protein unfolds. The the temperature at which the protein unfolds is a measure of its uh uh, protein stability. So let's look at uh, some of the challenges in uh, protein folding research. Folding in the cellular environment is more complex than folding in vitro because the cellular environment is crowded and uh, contains many other molecules such as other proteins, nucleic acids and uh, metabolites. These other molecules can interact with the protein and affect its folding. Protein aggregation is a process by which the protein forms aggregates and uh, these are insoluble and can be toxic to the cells. Protein aggregation is a problem in many diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and 
Parkinson's disease. Protein misfolding can lead to a number of diseases including Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, cystic fibrosis and these diseases protein fold incorrectly to form aggregates and damage the cells and tissues. Understanding the protein folding is uh, essential for drug discovery and design. Many drugs work by uh, targeting specific proteins. In order to design these drugs that are effective and safe, it is important to understand the three-dimensional structure of the target protein and how it folds. So there has been uh, recent advances in the protein folding using the artificial intelligence. Alpha fold is uh, one of the recent development and it is based on the deep learning. So alpha fold is a deep learning uh, protein folding prediction tool uh, developed by Google AI. Uh, alpha fold has been shown to be able to predict three-dimensional structure of the protein with high accuracy. So this has applications in uh, drug discovery and also implication for personalized uh, medicine. So let's uh, recap whatever we have discussed. Protein folding is a complex process that is essential for protein function. There are a number of experimental and computational techniques that can be used to study protein folding. Protein aggregation and misfolding are important problems in the biology and medicine. So recent advancements in the uh, deep learning and artificial intelligence, the protein folding prediction tools have a potential to revolutionize the drug discovery and design and enable personalized medicine. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please press the like button and share it with your friends. Thank you.